Welcome back to the Emergency Power Podcast. You've made it through another week, so sit on down and charge up with four fuzzy skittermanders who now have a new ship. Yeah! Huzzah! All right. I will never Ooh, relax so again many, after that spa. Never. So many, things, so many things to be fixed. I'm excited. No, they're new. They're not broken. <laughs> Don't fix it. Oh. Let's break them and fix them again. Uh, yes, all of your troubles are behind you. Uh, this is the uh, the epilogue arc. Nothing bad is going to happen oh, for the next goodness. four books, three books. Oh, good. I'm good. so good. glad I'm to hear for that. Some peaceful, that's, that's, that's great. Not relaxing. That's time. awesome. But uh, you know, on the bright side, you guys leveled up. You got a new ship. Uh, you <gasps> got promoted. Yeah. Nako Nechkin gave you the a new ship, which we're going to talk about. Yes. Uh, but I, I am curious about your characters. Yes. Uh, so, I'm very as secretive. we discussed, we discussed this in, uh, I think it was before the first episode. Uh-huh. Uh, Skittermanders have this cultural tradition of adopting additional surnames when they accomplish great things. So I'm wondering, between the beginning of our first show and now so including anything that happened during the first book and anything that may have happened uh in the months that took place between then and now what uh, surname has everybody adopted let's start with nako adam okay so for nako honestly that last mission that we did was like a big turning point for them not only did we get a ship out of it, but we also had to go rescue the captain. Like, that was a big mission. So yes. their surname is absolutely based on that. They are, they are now Nako Ayan, which, if you break it down because I'm a nerd, turns into AI and then space annihilator. Just that oh. part is cut <laughs> off. Nice. Nako Ayan. So they face down this AI, like, not quite 1v1, because obviously everyone was working, but like they survived this fight against this rogue AI and lived to tell the tale. So that is like a badge of honor for them. Yeah, I mean, you took some hits in that fight. <laughs> yes, you did. So Hard I can too. totally understand uh, taking that. OK, amazing. That was a good big bad for sure. Yeah. What about John Gazi Gaz? What did Gazi Gaz get for their new surname? So Gazi Gaz did two things and one was of course surviving this whole entire yes. awesome yeah. encounter and then after that guys you guys did party a lot so like you do <laughs> like you do well deserved hard. yeah of course so the thing is is that gazi spent a lot of time partying like hey! so and gazi was also inspired by nako and the discussion that they had i think in the first or the second it was episode. the first episode. The first episode, and that inspiration stuck. So Gazi's new name is Gazi Gaz A. No fear. It's super <laughs> intense, and Ga- and it's now literally in Gazi's name. So Gazi wants everyone to know that Gazi has no fear. Yes. Did you get awesome. one of those T-shirts from the '90s that says "No fear"? <laughs> no, fear. no fear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I I got it after a party. That was it. Was like a it was a really old throwback '90s party, and that was the shirt that I got. <laughs> you got drunk and bought a novelty shirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mostly, I think a lot of Gazi's money goes towards drunk buying uh, clothes and I mean, you know random things. It's a good thing the shirt was already sleeveless. Otherwise, you'd have had to figure out how to make. Five exactly. Sleeves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, dude. So I guess Skitter, Skittermander shirts just, they just come with very vertical holes for the arms. I imagine there's not a piece of fabric between each arm, you know? It's like, like a depends, string tank, depends. you know? Yeah, it's like a stringer. Right. I, I, yeah. I would expect, like, as you approach the higher end of, like, tailored pieces, you'd probably get something with individual arm holes that's, like, yeah. flexible enough or to yeah, like for a fitness sleeveless. buff then maybe yeah. you'd want it like clinging it's basically and a poncho yeah. Yeah. <laughs> skittermander s- sleeveless shirts or ponchos <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i do know people who if you want to you know get tailored and feel good you just you just let me know and i'll point you in the right direction sorry 
They're just cold, so throat's a little, uh, you know, not great. All right. What about <laughs> Vinny? What did Quonks adopt for their new surname? So Quonks, Quonks' surname, and I say surname, it's it's really in my, what I'm trying to do is just an additional syllable on onto her name. Quonks shall forever more be known as Quonkscraft. Oh, dude, I played that when I was a kid. Quonkscraft? Yeah. Quonkscraft 3 was my favorite, though. <laughs> so, through disabling the massage bed to rescue her captain, through uh, battling butler droids trying to kill her and everyone else around her, through outsmarting an AI, Quonks found herself using more finesse and more of her mind than her brawn or her brute strength and, and those things that have sort of shined in circles around her. And so she holds on to craft as a surname, as as a, a reminder that sometimes your brain is bigger than, than your brawn. I like it. Very I've cool. never had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Not while I'm around anyway. It's all right. You're the hero, Nako. <laughs> he's the... That's true. He's the main anime character. I, I should have put that as my surname. I should have been Nako Hero. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, mean, I like yeah, that. Quonks did a lot to make sure that the uh, the adventure was a success. Oh, like, hell yeah. Nako, Nako was fighting off the, the AI hologram, but Quonks was up in the ducks, disabling everything. Getting electrocuted. Uh, with that bot time. Getting electrocuted. Quonks is so, all yeah. up in them guts, yeah. You you put in some work. I'm pretty sure that we would have died out there to the hard light AI if the people in the vents hadn't actually been doing their job. Well, and that's it's it I love that because that to me is the picture of Quonkscraft. Is like, yes, there are these people that are going to be loud and braggadocious and take all of the credit and yeah. Have the perception that <laughs> <laughs> they've done all of the things when in fact it's it's Quonks, people like Quonkscraft crawling through ducts and getting electrocuted that really makes the magic happen. Absolutely. I feel like there were shots fired there for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Speaking of making the magic happen. Oh, uh, oh snap. That was, that was such a good transition. That was so good. That's yeah. why I segued, baby. I would like to hear about Dakoyo's new mm. surname. Well, Dakoyo, um, his main contribution uh, towards the end of that whole first part was just helping Quonks uh, stay up and uh, and at it with uh, keeping with, you know, rolling those computers and engineering checks and stuff like that. So being that he healed him, helped buff him and stuff, he, his name is Dakoyo Skitter Saver, and he's going to try to live up to that going forward. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Yeah, and he's oh, been studying right. medical books in the meantime, so yeah, he's going to try to be ready. That is wonderful. Yeah, like Honestly, I think my favorite part about that combat was how everybody played an integral part to make it work. And if one of us wasn't doing that, we would have just been beaten down and turned into pets. 100%. <laughs> there was some very strong synergy going on between all of your abilities, and I really enjoyed that. So much it was fun. fun. Hanson! Three... Hands One, in yeah. all six hands. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. All six hands in. It's way oh too many gosh. hands. <laughs> yeah, Skittermander group huddles are uh, a bit of a thing. <laughs> and get crowded real fast. They're all hands. They're all hands. So, without further ado, let's say we get started with book two, yes. Skitter Crash. Yes. Mm. Hooray. Ah. I don't like the sound of this. Is this what happens after a party together, guys? Skitter crash? Every time. Here we go. Hold on to your butts. We return to our six-armed heroes after another successful salvage operation. You've just returned from an abandoned mining asteroid, and its spoils fill the cargo hold of your vessel, the Helping Hand. Your very own ship, which your boss, Nakonechkin, purchased for you after your deeds aboard the Emerald Empyrean. You're still so proud of it and the fact that Nakonechkin trusts you enough to send you alone on missions. You drive your zero-G mining vehicle into the cargo hold, loaded with salvage, and have plotted a course back home. 
That intro just makes me think we're gonna immediately destroy the ship because that just seems right for it. Yes. Oh no. Oh man. Uh, first thing I want to know is who is piloting the ship and who is, quote, the captain? Ooh, oh, the God. Captain. Is this going to be starship combat? <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, oh, no. the captain. I will not go. This is definitely something that you all ha- would have, like, your characters have long established. Oh, yeah. okay. you've, been, you've been flying okay. around for months. So, so just so what for I, the sake of continuity. What, what I'm hearing is you can metagame this. So Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. You can talk out a character. I've got a plus six for piloting. I have a plus six. seven. So does Nako, I think. Yeah, I've got a plus seven as well. So okay, fine. I'm fine with either being piloting, but... Also, because I was second in command on the other ship, Nako secretly really wants to be captain, but will not say it on basis of pride. <laughs> I feel like even though Nako is highly skilled in piloting, she can be a little, uh, she can fly off the handle pretty quickly, be a little bloodthirsty. So it's, pr- it's Isn't probably that good. Is that what you that... want for a pilot to fly? Uh, no, off the no, handle? we don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's not a combat ship ish. So. <laughs> not yet, it's not. <laughs> until we fix it. I would like for my pilot to be on the handle. That that would be <laughs> ideal. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Fine. It's all right, Nako. You'll have plenty of time to stretch your stuff. Okay, so then who will be the pilot instead? It's definitely well, not going to be me. Not trained. Very well. <laughs> Sorry. Guzzy guzz. I'm assuming that Quonks is computer slash engineering. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Okay, I'm just going to put that in. Yeah. That's I'll uh, I'll head down to the engine room, make sure those are uh, ticking along nicely. So, Nicole. Yes? I can't fly. Uh-huh. I love it. It's fun. Also, also fun to just like, you know, just like, shoot. So, I don't know what you're feeling. Well, I, I am not very good at flying. I, okay. G- Gazi, compared to me, I think you're far more suited to the job. Wow, thank you. I can have a calm demeanor and help plan, and I can I can shoot if needs be, or help with the shields or something like that. Okay, guess I'm. This is the conversation I guess we had weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And ever since then, Gazi's been wearing a pilot hat. Okay, so Gazi, (laughs) Gazi, you're going to be the pilot. Love it. Yes. So there, there are really like there are other positions on the ship, and you probably shift between them. But in general operation, there's got to be a captain. So we've got Dakoyo or Nako. <laughs> I don't forget too that there is the additional like magic officer. There's magic officer. Oh, okay. uh, That's true. You, there's also someone has in a combat situation, someone would have to operate the guns. And you can switch probably. You can probably do you, both. Yeah, you all might might be shifting around. You know, maybe the captain is also the person who operates the guns. And that is sure. A-OK. Uh, but... I do want to know who kind of gives the general orders around the ship. I think Nako would certainly want to be that person, and Dakoya would not really want to fight him on it. Plus, he can help with being a magic officer, so he would have yielded. Yeah, well, like, this is this is the, what I expect to be the thing. Nako, it's obvious to everyone that Nako wants it. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's they're trying to hide it, but it, they're only hiding it to themselves. Everyone else is like... They're strutting around, <laughs> sticking their chest out. Obviously, they want this. Yeah. yeah. I just don't want to wake up with Nako, you know, like holding a Dashko over my head, like, you know, or something like that. What? Wanting to usurp <gasps> me so you can be captain. She can be captain. Right. Yeah. That's true. Wow. It's yours, wow. Nako, if so you want So this is it. what you guys expect of me. Huh? <laughs> I don't know anymore. Now I know. I'm always pleasantly <laughs> surprised, but. Gazi did make yeah. a sign that said Nako for captain. Okay. Posted in the <laughs> mess hall. I'm, I'm going to assume that. In a, so Nako gives the orders around the ship. Then we'll say I'll put, I'm gonna write that down. Yeah. Uh, in a combat situation, though, it sounds like Nako might run to the guns. Yeah. Um, yeah. I probably. can do things like I have some intimidate skill. Like if I needed to yeah. throw some captain orders out, but yes, I would obviously jump to gun when it is required. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah. So that's I think that's our our crew dynamic here. For the helping hand, we've got Nako as captain slash gunner, Gazi Gaz as pilot, Quonks on science officer and engineering, and Dakoyo on magic officer, and maybe gunner as well, uh, depending on the situation. We haven't 
really talked about how your ship is outfitted. There are nice. some guns that can be operated with mysticism. So nice. it's cool. very likely that uh, if Dakoyo wants to operate a gun, it can be done that way. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at those. They're, they look pretty cool. There's some good ones. Yeah. Nice. But I think that that answers my question. So I'll continue. You've been in the drift for a little more than two days since you left the asteroid when an alert on your ship's sensors lets you know that another vessel is approaching. You all gather on the bridge as a communication channel opens from the incoming starship. The view screen lights up with the image of a scarred, angry human woman. And I'm going to send you a picture of that right <gasps> now in Foundry. Ooh, Pirate's Revenge. Wow. You that sent work? me like all of the notes. Yeah, yeah. this oh, is a cool. lot of text. Oh, yeah. close that. Uh, doop. Did that work? There you go. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. She looks pretty miffed. Yeah. 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 She's pretty angry. <laughs> so this is so someone please describe this this image. She kind of looks like she's from the 80s. Uh, oh, the she has hair, like 100 percent. Yeah. And the hoop earrings <laughs> say I'm from the 80s and I'm like. <laughs> I'm from the movie Mean Girls, and I'm one of the popular ones. <laughs> yes, yep. yes. But she's, it's like a but pirate she's also version wearing, of that like, Military of... regalia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's got the yeah. um, bandana on. She's got the General Patton shoulder pads and a bandolier, some sort of armor on her torso, and her uh, eye makeup on point. Yes. Yeah, that was a big part of the '80s for me. Was definitely the eye makeup. Oh yeah, she's taking souls with those eye points. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she looks cool. Yeah, yeah it's, awesome. cool. it's a cool image. So this image comes up on your view screen, and she begins to speak. Attention, filthy vermin. Oh, no. Prepare to be boarded by Captain Selazi and the crew of the Nova Warlock. We will take your cargo, destroy your power core, and leave you to float aimlessly through space until you die from hunger, thirst, God. freezing temperatures, uh, or lack of oxygen. Uh, that's unnecessary. Whichever. It doesn't really matter to me as long as you die slowly and painfully. So much anger. She didn't need to go that far. What do you do? Who hurt you? <laughs> yeah. I will reach over and press the intercom and say, Go ahead. Welcome aboard. Oh God! <laughs> God uh, Just gonna go straight wow. into it. Wow! I love it. <laughs> so anyway, I started blasting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna address Quonks's first because I do have more I can give you guys. Okay. Oh, okay. So Quon, can you repeat that again? What you said? Hey, uh, who, who hurt you? You You mean you don't remember my brother, Abram Salazi? Abram. Abram? Uh, Abram? Abraham Solas? Is that? Anybody remember who this is? She said Salami. Abram Salasi, captain of the Nova Witch? The Nova Witch. You humiliated him about a year ago. You disabled his engines by jettisoning an unusually large supply of caramel crystalline crunchies into the intake manifolds. Oh, was he, the he drifted for weeks, <laughs> surviving slowly on the very junk food that had humiliated him. Was, and now yeah. that I've found you, I will avenge my brother and leave you to the same fate. Did, did he have crossed eyes or a really big bald spot? Ah! <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> All right. Now, is this something that we actually did? Or, <laughs> like, do I remember this? Yeah. You do not remember this at all. If it did happen, it was so inconsequential to you that you have blocked it out of your memory. I might have done it. Yeah, I, I, I pressed the mute button. I'm like, yeah, I feel like this is something I probably did, but I don't remember this. <laughs> Who is this, this lady? This Damn. sounds like Who is me, this? but I don't think I did it. <laughs> so. Roll, normally, I would have you all roll for a space combat initiative. Oh. But. But. Just before the Nova Warlock can attempt to engage with you. Uh oh. The helping hand sensors begin to screech wildly wee as a swirling wee cloud wee of multicolored energy suddenly surrounds both ships. <sighs> There's a gut wrenching sensation as your vessel is pulled and tossed about, suddenly 
teleporting you from the unexpected but familiar backdrop of drift space to an unknown configuration of stars. Mm. However, alarms are still blaring, signifying total engine failure and countless other problems. And to make matters worse, the computers indicate that the helping hand is high above an unidentified planet and plummeting rapidly. A voice chimes in from all nearby computer terminals. No! Oh, please, Don't not worry. again. It's <laughs> doom, 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 to your doom. out of character pleasant surprise. Uh, this is not because the AI has suddenly taken over your ship from the last book. Quonks has integrated the technology that she stole from that ship and turned it into your personal ship's computer. I'm so angry right now. Yes. <laughs> I'm so angry yes, right now. Yes, it works. It works. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Unregistered life forms detected on board. Engines offline. Navigation systems offline. Quarks. Planetary mass detected. Unscheduled landing imminent. Quarks. End of alerts. Press or say one to repeat this message. <laughs> What I do thought you I do? killed you. What? what? <laughs> no, we don't need to repeat it. No. Uh, the, the message repeats. <laughs> zero, zero. Unregistered oh life forms detected on board. Quark, 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 what have you Quark. done? Stop doing this. It's stopping. Is there anything that I can do uh, from a, a piloting check to like pull up to like reorient you the ship at the all stick yeah and try and wrench it into <sighs> another the engines are not responsive at all they have been taken offline okay someone give me a computer's check all right i got you clocks craft status 12 12 on computers uh, <sighs> so, there is definitely something wrong with the ship <laughs> the only thing you can tell is the warlock is the nova warlock the other ship that was going to engage with you is no longer registering on sh on scans. Oh. Someone give me a physical science check. Do we even have scans anymore? Or is that down too? The computers are not offline. Got it. Uh, okay. That is 22. 22. You surmise with your physical science role and the knowledge that the helping hand has doubled in mass and size, the two ships have fused together, <gasps> most likely by a energy cloud that brought you out of the drift and back into the material plane. Cap, er, uh, uh, Nako, you're not gonna believe this. Captain's fine. <laughs> <laughs> <We're getting out. laughs> you're not gonna believe this, so. You're probably right. Uh, what, there's a computer in front of me. Something is wrong, I have no, no idea what it is. No, I believe that. <laughs> The, the helping hand is now twice the ship it used to be. And it what does that mean? It appears to have fused with that other ship that was about to attack us. Wait, what? I look around to see if the other people are here as well. Hostiles are boarding from decks one and two. Wait, are we still plummeting? Yeah, Affirmative. I, I can't get control uh, of the ship. There's no edges. Quark's grabbed. I need some edges. One more thing that you know, Quonks, with your physical science role, you remember. Do you remember? Oh when no. First night of September. Please don't copyright strike us. <laughs> AI, stop playing music. <laughs> that was. <laughs> what? What? Alexa, stop. <laughs> you know that if your ship is plummeting and you have no thrusters, there is no safe place on this ship for a crash landing. Cool. Oh no. However. There is one place that you recall would be safe. The Zero-G mining vehicle does have emergency stop controls. Although they are very primitive, they would help you to survive a crash landing. Okay, clarifying question. Would help like us individually survive through the crash or like activating something on that Zero-G mining vessel would help the ship that we're on land safely? There is no way that the zero-G mining vessel could have enough counter thrust to it. stop two giant ships that are fused together, but it can save you if you were inside of it. Got it. 
Can I try to get the engines back on? Or is that futile? It would be futile. Okay. It's, it's, it's over. I just got this <laughs> yeah, thing. I, it was so nice. All of my clothes are on board. <laughs> Guys, I'm pretty sure this bird is lost. Let's, uh, Captain, my recommendation is an emergency evacuation to the zero G mining vessel. I am sorry for your loss. It was nice knowing you all. Goodbye. Nako puts a hand down on the desk. Goodbye, my dear. Uh, I know I'm supposed to go down with the ship, but I don't even feel like I got to captain this thing. All right. What are you talking uh, about? On... You've been captain for a year. <laughs> I. That is not that long of a tenure, let's be fair. <laughs> Captain, are we right. going to the mining vessel? Get to the mining vessel. Let's um, go. Where okay. are these boarding people coming from? Like, in relation to the Zero-G craft. Unregistered life forms boarding on decks one and two. They seem to be heading for Cargo Bay one. Okay, and where is the Zero-G craft in relation? Cargo Bay one. <laughs> of course. Go! Of course. We have to either... Fight our way to them, or we have to beat them there. Go, 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 everyone. Do I have time to get my clothes? No. Because they're really, they're really nice. And I am going to move you all to the new map. The new map. Got the Ooh, new, new so map. Excited. All right. Looks Got like that, a cargo bay. Is this, that, is is this the life? cargo bay or the other cargo bay? You yes. rush to the cargo bay as quickly as you can. You haven't seen any members of the crew of the Nova Warlock yet, but you're certain that they are nearby. Mm. Mm. I'm Pre certain that they're nearby. You huh. should and proceed now, cautiously. I'm going to ask you all to roll for initiative. Let's <laughs> go. Do, 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 I always do, wanted do, to have do, do, a fight do, do. where I was plummeting towards a planet on a ship that doesn't <laughs> work anymore. As you enter the cargo bay, you do see the glimpse of three pirates from the other ship currently inspecting your zero G mining vessel as a potential safe escape from the imminent crash. I literally do not remember who these people are, but they're not going to get in our way. That's right. After that last, that last ship that we saved, we can do this. This is nothing. All right, everyone prioritize getting to the craft and Throwing them out of the way, but if they try to stop us, we'll have to take them down. Huzzah. All right. Uh, has everyone rolled initiative? Yeah. Okay. All right. What did Quonks get? Quonks got an 11. Okay. Nako. Eight for Nako. Gazi Gaz. Five. Takoyo. But a two, GM. Oh, no. Okay. Mm. We're going to start. Round one. Fortunately for you, the other party doesn't seem to notice you yet as they are currently standing around the mining vessel on the far end of the cargo bay. And so I'm going to skip their turns, which were all before yours. Wow. This is yes, essentially a surprise right. round. Okay. We should surprise. Would it be them. safe to say that we drew weapons while coming here? Absolutely. You were warned that there were enemies aboard. You would have drawn your weapons immediately. Fantastic. Uh, two clarifying questions. Would Quonks know if this vehicle is big enough for all of us? It could house five people. So five medium people? Five Skittermanders. Five Skittermanders. <laughs> You're a Skittermander. You think in Skittermander terms. I can, okay, cool. So there's more in this hall than can fit in this vehicle safely. Absolutely. Mm, love a good Charlie problem. <laughs> so we could fit maybe like one other person, like medium sized person, if we tried real hard. Is that about right? Yes. Okay. So first up is Quonks, because the uh, the three pirates, they are not paying attention. Yep. Uh, we've established that this ship ain't big enough for the all of us. Quonks is going to move to oh this is the other clarifying question do i know what direction this ship is in like this vehicle is in in this cargo hold like have i been in here before so the, you can tell that the cargo bay door is to your to the east uh if you look at this map so assuming you know north is north the cargo bay door is to the east the ship is currently facing north so i want to go to the east that is correct cool Quonks is going to quietly step 30 feet. That feels like not 30 feet. 
Ah, also doing a you, lot of diagonals. Maybe you have found one of the new things that I added Ooh. in this oh, cargo no. bay. Okay. I, I, I added this because I found a new module in Foundry, but it also applies to the map. Difficult terrain? Strewn about this map, this cargo bay, are several cables and various boxes that are causing difficult terrain in random places. Klaus, did you leave this out? If you drag your token, it should pop up Yeah, yeah with it does. the locations of the difficult terrain. Moving through any of those spaces is going to take extra movement. Oh. And you can tell in, in Foundry, you can tell how much movement based on how thick the uh, the lines are. I think it tells you like X3, X2. Love mm -hmm. it. Way to go. Awesome. This is dope. Well done. So there is difficult terrain in play on this map. Cool. So Quonks is going to quietly move to east, southeast, going around like a big, what looks like a uh, either a container or like a reefer container. Yeah, container. Um, and you come around this corner and you see clearly two of the pirates. They're currently looking at the ship, trying to figure out a way to get inside and examining whether or not it could protect them from this imminent crash. Um, Quags pulls out her clicker and hits the panic button so that the alarm on the vehicle goes off. Amazing. Yeah, um, uh, I'd say that startles them, and uh, you know that that's gonna they're they're gonna act in the next round, obviously. But uh, they are now aware that something's going on. Cool. They don't know what. Uh, oh, good. There there went our element of surprise for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my interact with an object action, or can I take a shot? No, that was free. Cool. Uh, I'm going to shoot at the southernmost one that I can see. Okay, yeah, you can see two. I'm going to attack with my azimuth laser rifle. There it is. Yeah. Boomski. That is a 27 against EAC. Oof. Oh, yeah, against their flat-footed EAC. <laughs> Bro. You got it. Give me damage. Dope. Uh, that's normal damage. That is eight fire damage. That is max damage. So, Woo! so Quonks sees them like tinkering with a panel, and is immediately offended. Like, how dare you touch my masterpiece? <laughs> and like shoots them in the wrist that they were touching the panel with. Wow, <laughs> amazing. And. You, you hit them and they turn around and the one uh, above them you see also turn around and you, now that you're looking at their faces, they look like they might be siblings. Two mm. sisters. And they say, there's one over there! Get him! And we're going to move on to Nako. Okay. I'm going to move probably more north to see if I can't get around and flank these guys as they look towards Quonks. Okay, you go up north and you got a clear view of two of them, plus you have a partial view of one of the others. So you see at least three out here. Okay. Two of them are currently engaged with uh, Quonks or, or about to engage Quonks. The other one is looking around. They don't see Quonks just yet. All right, then I will run around the corner and having all of my weapons out, and not wanting my crew to get injured, I will smack my Doshko against the ground and say, I'm over here. And then I'm going to shoot the one that had not seen Quonks with my gun. Nice. Uh, now that one does, it looks like there is a small box in the way, so they're gonna have mm -hmm. partial cover. Ha, as if you could stand up to my 11 versus KAC. Oh, 11. It, I think you're gonna hit the box that they're standing in front of that was a warning shot get away from my stuff <laughs> i see another one over here yeah get i just yelled at you i just yelled at you <laughs> gazi gaz gazi their hand shakes wipes away tears at losing the helping hand and all of their wardrobe and gazi says all right let's do this let's do this come on no fear come on and gazi starts to walk forward uh and Runs forward 30 feet. Can I? I suppose I still can't see where they are, huh? Yeah, from where you're at, you can't see any of them. There's a couple of cargo containers in your way. Okay. 
got it. Can I squeeze through? So Gazi ran forward about 30 feet and is in between three cargo containers for uh-huh. the listeners. And there, there's like a small gap that Gazi might be able to squeeze uh, through. Is that a okay or no? Uh, yeah, I'll allow you to squeeze through there. It's going to be uh, difficult you know, terrain, so it, it's going to cost double movement to go to that next square. Got it. Gazi's going to squeeze right through to the other side and then sees uh, sees them standing next to the craft and is going to stop right where uh, they are. And that's it. That was those two move actions. Okay, Dakoyo, you're up. Dakoyo is going to go diagonally. Oops. Going to go diagonally south, uh, uh, east, just below Quonks a bit. And I think should be able to probably get a shot off here. Uh, yeah, you can get a clear shot to the. Ooh, do you have a clear shot? No, you're you're gonna have no cover to deal with. They okay. If you attack the one to the south, sure. Then you don't have to deal with cover. Fantastic. Uh, cool. Quonks Dakoya is gonna do that, and he's gonna. Here we go. His attack roll is a twelve against KAC. Does that happen? KAC. Yeah. Oh, oh. Not quite. No. The shot. I think the shot. The shot just barely Ting. clips right next to their foot. It's so close, but just misses them. Well. Oh. And now it's their turn. So you see this first one run up and take cover behind this box that saved them. Nako, you shot at this northernmost one, and. They run up to this box and you see them pull out something from their vest and then they throw it at you. It's a frag grenade. I'm going to need you to make a reflex save. Oh, assuming that they hit. Wow. So they're going to make an attack roll against an AC of five. They got it. So, yes, make a reflex save for me. That is a 10. Okay, DC 14. So you're going to take four piercing damage as this grenade Uh, goes off uh, and destroys a couple of the cargo containers next to you as well. Oh, the southernmost one is going to take cover as well behind a crate, and they're going to throw a grenade at Ghazi because that's who they can see clearly. Let's see. They do hit the square. Give me a reflex save. Uh, come on, dice. <gasps> 13. 13, DC 14. Oh, okay. oh. But not as good of a roll. You're going to take two piercing damage. Uh. And the last of the pirates, they're actually, uh, they're not going to move. Well, they're going to move down just one square. Maybe they're not as bright to take cover, but they are going to pull out a grenade. They're that smart. And they're going to throw this grenade... Over to you, Quonks, and Ooh. you, Dakoyo, since you are both near each other. They're going to take a little bit of a range penalty, but they easily hit that AC of five and make reflex save Quonks and Dakoyo. Man, they just got grenades for all of us, don't they? They really do. 16 for Quonks. 16, you save. 17. 17, you save as well, so you're going to each take two piercing. Would have been five. And that's their turn. So we're moving on to Quonks. This is round two for you. What do you do? Well, I believe two can play at that game. So Quonks uh, is going to move up and around this corner here and throw a grenade between what appears to be the two southerly uh, individuals. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Smat. Yeah, they're both standing too close. They, they're going to get hit. Uh, so that's a frag grenade one. Uh, that's a 23 to hit. Oh, you got it. Nice. Okay, they're going to make some saving throws. Give me damage. That is three piercing damage. Okay, the lowest save was a 14. Does that save? Um, That's a great question. I don't remember what the save is. It's going to be 10 plus the level of the item uh, plus your dex modifier. Plus my dex modifier. So plus... Half the level of the item. Plus. Uh, frag grenade one is, is a zero. So just 10 plus your dex. Uh, so that's a 12. Okay. So they both saved. You said it did two? Three. So half to one. Half to one. Okay. Ouch. All right. Nako, you're up. 
So this explosion goes off right in their face and sends shrapnel up into them. But through the smoke and the flames of the grenade, they charge through with their Dashko above their head, screaming a battle cry as they run straight towards the guy behind that box. <laughs> <laughs> they just like like this horrible, tiny, fuzzy juggernaut coming right at them. It's, it's honestly <laughs> horrifying for them. <laughs> Good. My mental picture is Chucky. <laughs> yeah, wow. I can see that for sure. Oh, yeah, me man. too. My rolls are... Or something. They're, they're, my usual rolls are coming back. It was a fluke in the last book. That is a 12 against KAC. Oh, tw- KAC? Yeah. Oh, I thought your Dashko was EAC. No, it's a regular Dashko, not a flame Oh, Dashko. bummer. Um, okay, yeah, 12 KAC. You, uh, you swing your Dashko, but they have a long sword out, and they parry it with Ooh. their long sword. Ooh, what the ka-ching! Ka-ching! Okay. Wow, okay. It's kind of cool, but dang. And we're going to move on to Gazi Gaz. Gazi <laughs> waves their hands as like just this smoke and all this debris falls after the explosion. And then Gazi looks out and sees uh, the one who is the pirate who's standing next to the ship and says, I don't know where you grow up, but they didn't teach you to share. And that is going to be uh, the get that everyone can use against the pirate who is next to the ship right here yeah. yeah. and then here yeah. and then guys he's going to take a five foot step realizing that uh, he's out in the open going to take a five foot step in front of uh quonks and try not to block her line of sight to get a little bit more cover from the one who hit him with the grenade and that again is my entire turn okay uh gazi guys i don't think that you can five foot step through difficult terrain ah <gasps> you are absolutely right but you're not gonna provoke if you just make a movement right right so you can still go there i just fair, want fair. to clarify good point good point it's not a guarded step yeah that's it okay gazi gaz you're done dakoyo you're at the bottom of the round round two uh dakoyo is gonna make his way right next to quonks so you can get a shot off which he will do, yeah. And never mind. All right, cool. So I think he can make that, yeah, based on my measurements earlier. So Tokoyo is like, all right, skin bag, try this on for size. He uh, fires again. Please work. Uh, it's a 17 against KAC. 18. If it's against the one with. You're targeting the one with Getem. That's an 18. Yep, that's 18. That is yeah. going to hit. Excellent. Yes. yes. Four piercing points of damage. There we go. That's what I needed. Good. Okay, they're you know they're looking a little beat up. The two on the south, they're they're still. uh, I'll tell you, they're over fifty percent health. I don't. don't, I'm not good at at descriptive. Like they're not bloody. Is it below sixty percent? Yeah, but is bloodied. Like I don't. I've never kind of established uh, the the standards for for labeling their health without giving you the numbers. That was the like three point five or four, right, Manny? That was yeah. yeah, Bloodied Uh, was always half damage. Yeah, they're all still over 50 percent. We're going to move on to round three. It's their turn. The one to the north being attacked by Nako is going to attack back with their longsword. <gasps> they wouldn't dare. That's a 22 against KAC for eight slashing damage. Yeah, nothing I can do about that. 22 is a big number. <laughs> OK, uh, next up is the one to the far south. Uh, they have the clearest shot on Dakoyo. Yeah. And the two to the south currently only have tactical semi-auto pistols out, but mm. they are going to, this one is going to draw a longsword in the other hand, but they're going to shoot at Dakoyo with a tactical mm. semi-auto pistol. That's an 18 against KAC. Yes. You're going to take three piercing. I. And the last shot from this one in the middle that's not in cover. They also draw their longsword in their other hand, but they're going to fire a gun at Gazi Gaz. That's a 13 against KAC. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. All right. That's all they can do. My fur. (laughs) Smells. Not good. (laughs) If I had time, I could help with that. Little singed. Is that different than normal? (laughs) Damn it, Daco. 
Quonks, you're up. Quonks is going to flank around the box to the southerly most uh, pirates nice. and just like fire off her azimuth laser pistol. Oh, yeah. Earth pistol. Rolling for attack. That is an 18 against EAC. I'm going to assume that hits. Does that hit? That hits. That is for oh. six fire damage. So, like, I imagine sort of like a puppy going around a 90 degree corner on tile. Quonks <laughs> is just like running, 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 and then turns to the left before she hits the end of the box and just like slides into the square that she's in. <laughs> Love it. And then shoots uh, shoots this pirate right in the middle of the back. Yeah, you slide around this corner with this cargo bay container and just hit her right in the side. Ah, stupid fuzzballs. Don't touch my ship. This is our ship now. Nako, you're up. What did you just say? She said it's our ship. I think she called dibs. This further enrages Nako, <laughs> and they're going to pull back to full swing on this guy. All right. Yeah, looking at them now, you see all three of them. It seems like there's three of them in this cargo bay. They all look like they're probably related, like they're sisters. Okay. That's a 13. How's a 13 do you, pal? 13 will hit. You just barely really? make it through their armor. Give me damage. Says I'm not uh, your pal, buddy. <laughs> I'm thoroughly shocked by this. Man, my rolls are garbage today. That is minimum damage for eight. Only eight minimum. Yeah, That's only, only eight. eight. You have no idea the power that is put inside this little <laughs> dude. Or inside I, I, this have, little person. I do know because you did it last book. Yeah, apparently, I tired myself out for the next year. Cause <laughs> Oh, no. Nako spent this year in the gym, but this is like load week. So she's just yeah. like super sore. Man, I've been going hard <laughs> and now this is happening. Are you doing anything else? I think you still have a move action. Just to be cool, can I try to get up on this box right here? It's a guarded step to get on the box because you're otherwise you'd provoke. And uh, you can't guarded step onto a difficult so terrain. You can take the dodge That's action. The answer. You could tumble. So if you give me an acrobatics roll. It's fine. I was just trying to be cool. We can move on. <laughs> you wanted to be eye level with them. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I need all. the height advantage so I can actually maybe hit them. You need the high ground? Always. I still wouldn't have it even if I climbed up. <laughs> <laughs> Gazi. Uh, I think Gazi is going to turn and look and there's wait, oh there's no longer get him on that one pirate and so guys is gonna go no fear no fear no fear and then swiftly pivot lean out around the corner and just both hands like or, or two of their hands possibly even three or four are on their static arc pistol as if they're like a special agent and gonna take a full action shot at Ooh, the uh, at the pirate, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. John Wick over here. In the one in the middle. The one in the middle. The one who is still defied any sense of trying to get to cover. Yeah. And Quonks, uh, Vinny. By the way, I will tell you the one that you shot this round. They are now below fifty percent. <laughs> coo, 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 coo. All right. First roll is a four against EAC. <laughs> Not just a four. Because I see, I see red text. Oh, no. That's a natural one. That was so much I cool out of my head. Of red. Bum, bum, and this bum, of crits. Bum. I'm going to need you to roll to confirm. Roll to confirm. Confirm your failure. Uh, and that's just with a normal roll, yeah? Same attack. You, just, just another the... attack roll, yeah. Uh, it's a 14. 14. Okay, you do not get a card. It's just a miss. <sighs> Okay, but does that mean that I get my second full attack? You still get a full attack, yeah. yeah so okay. go ahead and make your other attack. This thing's could have gone bad. <sighs> First oh, miss. Wait, 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 wait. John, you didn't give yourself the minus four on your confirm roll. Oh. Yeah, I, it's literally sorry. the same roll, sadly. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I thought I had asked, <laughs> uh, but that was not clear. Okay. Mis misinterpretation. Yeah. It's the, it's the same modifiers Got to it. confirm. Got it. Yep. Good to know. So... With the minus four, that is mm -hmm. a crit fail. <gasps> with a fumble. <laughs> so. A lot of cool things happen. Critical Zero. fumble! Fumble! Critical fumble! I'm gonna 
grab some cards and Let's I'm gonna let you to pick fumble. your poison. Do you want card number one or card number two? Ooh, it's a good question. Uh, too bad it's not the three door. One I'm thinking card two. number dose. Number two. Dose. Okay. Give him the dose -ekies. And what type of damage is your weapon? It is emotional uh, damage. Yeah, E for emotional <laughs> and for excellent. AKA How wonderful, because electric. the extreme effect on this oh, card no. is electricity. Dude, no. Emotional damage. <laughs> <laughs> Short circuit. Oh. One randomly determined piece of technological equipment on your person what? stops working for 1D3 rounds. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see. What do you got on your person? You have your static arc pistol. Also, I have a charge cloak, which you I feel like... You have a charge cloak. What yes. is a charge cloak? Why have I never heard of, that, of this before? It it powers devices. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, As it, if it were a battery. It recharges batteries, essentially. Yeah. Is that... That is a magic item, though. That is not a technological item. Literally, the only thing you have is your gun. <laughs> Give me a 1d3 and your gun well, going well. doesn't work for 1d3 rounds. Oh, God. Oh, three rounds. <laughs> this is going very well Your for gun us. just shoots sparks. Oh. And now you pull the trigger and it's, it's not firing. That means yeah. that they don't get the second attack of their... Full this attack. is the worst. <laughs> That's right. It's my, oh, my God. Oh, oh, no. I will allow you to take a move action if you want to take a move action. Uh, the benevolent GM has allowed you to run away. Honestly, yes. But Gazi says, ah! you can also get him. That's what I'm thinking. Gazi just had this cool image that played out in his head of like leaning around and pew, pew, just taking two shots and just hitting the pirate one. Too, yeah. And then Gazi just totally is dreaming about this and not seeing that their gun is like not charged and is faulty and they haven't thought about their gun in months because they've just been partying. So then they, they lead around the corner and fire it and misses. It's God's like, finish this. <laughs> and then just says, I'm going to get you one way or the other. Or, or my, my crew will. And then going to cast get him again. <laughs> I love it. Okay. They are tagged. The one in the middle. Forget them. Dakoyo. Dakoyo saw this. He's like, holy shit. He just kind of like looks at Gazi guys. And he's like, I love your spirit as always, Gazi. He's going to do a full attack on uh, this middle one. Nice. Likewise. Okay. You have a so, clear shot. Mm -hmm. So that's minus four. That's only a 10, right? Uh, yeah. A 10 is not going to hit it this time. Mm. 19 minus four, 15. 15 will hit. Uh huh. Well, plus, like, yeah, never mind. Plus the plus one like, for. Yeah, exactly. For, yeah. All right. So actually, 16. So just two piercing of damage, but there, take that. We're That's wearing right. you down, hey. I think. We're moving on to round four, and it's their turn. Nako, this one to the north, is not happy that you are trying to attack them. It's all right. It's mutual. They're going to full attack against you. All right. Do what you're going to do. God. Come so on. So here comes the Come first. On. The Bring first it. roll is a natural one. Oh, yes. Let's go. Uh, yeah. yes. I'm going to roll to confirm here. Mm, so good. A 19 to confirm. Wow. That is my armor. Wow. Is 19. So just a miss. Uh, God damn. I'm sorry. Did and you say Nako has a 19 AC? Yeah, I was he, waiting he for it to be like, oh, this super cool thing happens. Does an 18 hit you? No, it doesn't. Instead, they're rolling like 22s. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Does a Fair. 37 hit? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, the other roll is a four against KAC. Oh, yes. yeah. I don't think that's going to hit. Now you're rolling like me. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that one wasn't a nat one, but yeah, a two and a four. So they miss. Uh, this one to the south is up now. The one that's been getting shot by Quonks. They're not happy about it. They're going to move to the south to engage with Quonks in melee. Oh. <laughs> the picture I imagine is that there's a central light in this loading bay. And as she approaches Quonks, it 
just like her shadow looms over Kwong's entirely. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Uh Uh-oh. And that is a 22 against KAC. That hurts. That hurts real bad. For max damage. Oh, that does hurt real bad. 11 slashing. Oh, Oh, my. What? Wow. Some Ric Flair. Uh, The gloves are off. Over like a quarter of their health. That's a lot. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I was going to bring you on this ship, but definitely not now. (laughs) (laughs) We're taking this ship. There won't be anything of you left. Over my dead body. That's the idea. You can't say things like that. That's just setting them up. You can't let them get the last word in. I, I, We're gonna... I mean, I, mean uh, I, I don't know. We should... <laughs> <laughs> we should practice, Quags. We'll practice okay, later. Okay, we'll practice later. Okay. If I don't die. The last of the pirates is up. The one in the middle, they're going to move to the south to take cover where the uh, southernmost pirate was standing. And they're going to take mm. a shot at you, Decoyo, mm. from their new covered position. Running away. Uh, 15 against KAC. <sighs> yeah, that just that just makes it bad. Okay. Oh, <sighs> I'm sorry. Max damage again. Oh, oh my. What are we talking? Seven piercing. Just get it out of the way. Wow. Oh, my God. Man. Rolling pretty hot tonight. This is hurting. I'm not doing too shabby. I don't like it. Okay. Quonks, you are up. You have a big pirate in your face. Why don't you try this on for size? As Quonks pulls the pin on a second grenade. Oh, yeah. Are you taking a guarded step back first? Because you will provoke. Um, uh, I think that's... Uh, for the listener, if your GM ever says, are you going to XYZ, you really do should it. do Just XYZ. Do it. Just, it doesn't yep. matter what XYZ is. That's why we're going to ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I'm going to take a guarded step back. That's what I thought. I thought you said, I heard you say it. I just wanted to make sure that the listeners <laughs> That's know. what I thought you said. <laughs> I'm going to target this intersection here. Okay, yeah, you, if you hit that square, you're going to hit two pirates. So, uh, this nice. is a frag grenade mark two. Oh, you got oh, a mark two? Oh, wow. Dang, okay. bro. I did some shopping when we leveled up. Oh. It's a mark up. Um, for the, mark okay. for the listener, uh, we did some discussion in the Will Save Discord, shameless plug Will Save Discord, uh, on grenades and their nuances. <laughs> grenades are so wonderful. So that's a 17. A 17 will hit the five AC it takes to hit a square. Cool. That's a DC 14 <laughs> save. Don't oh demean my. his 17. <laughs> Don't demean yeah. his 17. It was impressive. That's a campaign slogan. <laughs> Six piercing damage uh, saves half to three. Okay. Is one of them dead yet? I feel almost one of them. Almost. Only one of them was under half health. That's mm. right. So probably yeah, they're, not. They're getting there. Super Six great. damage is not a lot of damage. <laughs> but for these guys, I feel like it's close. All right. So reflex saves. We got a six. Failure. And like an that. eight. Also oh, a failure. Hey! Yay! Yay! How much damage? Uh, six piercing. Okay. That hurts. That hurts real good. Oh, I will tell you that one of them is below 50%. Ooh. And one of them is... Almost Very there, near yeah. death. Yeah. <sighs> Sounds about right. And we're going to move on to Nako. All right. This guy and I just keep going back and forth, and I would really like to finish him off so I can go help with the others, but let's see what happens. Okay, a 14 versus KAC. 14 will hit. I don't think I've rolled above a four on my dice, though. Like, this is ridiculous. Oh, goodness. Give me more damage. I will give you... Okay. Not great, but slightly better. That's 11 piercing damage. Slightly better. That's good. Uh, Nako is a beast. You guys just wait until I hit max damage. Then you'll see. I will see. say, for you, for Nako, they are one hit away from death. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And we're going to move on to Gazi Gaz. Gazi looks at Dokoyo. Dokoyo. Yeah. We have to have them. And Gazi, just before you can say anything, Gazi turns and runs around the corner and is going to uh, be 
almost right behind the pirate who I originally cast Gidim on. And Gazi's going to look around the corner. Where is uh, Quonks? Ah, Quonks is like a little further to the south. Little, yeah, further to, to the south. Looking, seeing Quonks being pretty hurt. Quonks, I think you see like three of Gazi's hands. One points at you. One points at just Ga- like around the cargo container. A hand comes out. Yeah, points uh, at hands, you. but a furry hand points at you. And then Gazi's face comes over, and then two fingers saying, "I see you." And then two hands come out and make a heart. And that is your inspiring <laughs> boost for Amazing. nine stamina points. <laughs> I love that so much. That's adorable. Yeah. Gazzy guys. That's awesome. I want you to have a popsicle. No way. Because that was, that, was, that was so adorable. That was the most. Aww, thank you. That was the most original inspiring boost <laughs> I have ever seen. Oh, thank you. Okay, well, Cute. now I have a school. This is great. And then now I'm possibly going to get hit from this pirate. So, yeah. But you get nine points of nine or nine stamina points. Oh, that Gazi Gaz. <laughs> and Dakoyo, it is your turn. Dakoyo is going to roll up right behind Gazi Gaz. He blushes a little bit at that because that was really sweet. And then the one directly into the south, right in front of him, is the one that's just basically near death, right? Uh, the one through if you look through the pirate that is directly uh, to your south the one below that to the south of, the one to the south of that is mm. nearly dead but also the one to the very north is pretty close to death fair okay the code is gonna like shoot at the one directly north okay do 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 uh 17 and gonna attack Oh, yeah, oh, you got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Two yeah. piercing damage. Woo. <laughs> Two A piercing damage. A full half of the possible damage. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. No. Oh, my no, God. They have one HP left. No. Ah. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Yes. Okay. Two damage. You just ran around the corner and shot him in the foot. And they're like, <laughs> ah. It's <laughs> like a little toe. What? Yeah. All it took. What was that? <laughs> and it's their turn. Oh, no. I think they're a little annoyed, <laughs> but they still like Nako seems like the, the bigger threat here. I would agree. So more powerful. They're going to full attack with both weapons. Oh. They're going to swing at Nako wow. and then they're going to take a shot at Dakoyo. <gasps> oh, no. The two arm one in either direction. <laughs> yes. That's Amazing. a skilled pirate. All right. Yikes. Full attack with the long sword. You have to respect them. Nako. Yeah, that's right. I don't think this hits you. It's a 16 against KAC. Okay, you are correct. Oh, but uh, Dakoyo, uh, that's an 18 <laughs> oh, against ah. KAC. So do I get to slash into them as they fire a gun next to me? Oh, you that's right. do. A attack oh, of opportunity. Do. Yes. You get and the I, attack of opportunity. And provided I hit them, that'll go off before Dakoyo Ooh. gets shot, if I'm not mistaken. Nako, ever the combat expert. Oh, there's my rolls. That's a 29 against KAC. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> God damn it. For the fences, you and say? And that's uh, 14 piercing. <laughs> For the fences. So as this person goes oh, to take oh, a shot oh, at Dakoyo yeah. and makes the fatal mistake of turning their gaze away from the deadly Nako, <laughs> what happens? Describe how you prevent them from shooting Dakoyo. So they go to strike me with the sword and it just bounces off the armor. And then they turn their gun on Dakoyo and you see this fire come up in Nako's eyes and they whirl their Dashkar around and take this step and slam it into their side. So it pins them to the box they're next to. Oh Oh my God. (laughs) And they are dead. Don't oh, man. ever mess with my crew. Dakoya was one... curled up into a ball, ready to get shot, and he just unfurls, and he and you just see the love in his eyes. Nothing happens. Wow. Just... Wow. <laughs> Dakoya saw his nine lives pass in front of his eyes. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> the one to the south sees this happen and says, No, Velta, you stupid furry bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to charge at you with <gasps> hate in their eyes, Quonks. 
as they take a slash at you with their long sword. To be fair, you are invading our ship. Yeah, what she said. Don't try to use logic against me. I'm a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pirate. Uh, you... But their their rage blinds them as they try to swing at you, and their attacks just go right over your head. Quonks ducks Very to nice. try to make them feel better about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to move on to the last pirate, which is going to go after Gazi Gaz. <gasps> Full attack. Oh my. Belta, no! Here we go. Two attacks. <laughs> That's a natural one. Yeah. Let me confirm that. Does a 12 hit your KAC? It does not. Oh wow. no. Yes. Okay. So what I'm seeing is the two people who Nat wand and had cards are right next to each other, essentially fighting. Yes. Yes. So they're just there's lots of missing going on in this part it's of the map. It's a red shirt wow. fighting a stormtrooper. Oh, no. <laughs> lots, lots of red okay. uh, mishaps. All right, John. Since this is against you, I'll let you pick. Do you want them to take one or two? Two. Two. Okay. Oh, bonk! <laughs> you must attempt a disarm combat maneuver against a randomly determined adjacent creature. So I guess that's their other attack. Oh. I'm, I'm not going to give them three attacks. Right, right, right. So Fair they're going to take... They have to beat your KAC plus eight while also taking a minus four, even though this isn't normally allowed with a combat maneuver. The card said to do it, so they have to do it. That's, Are they included yeah. in that randomly decided adjacent creature? Like, could they potentially disarm themselves? Disarm themselves? Oh, that is totally mm. fair. A little percentile chance? I will flip a coin. Heads, it is Gazi. Tails. Also Gazi. It's them. They're going to disarm themselves. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Fortunately, they've got a minus four from the full attack. They do not disarm themselves, but they don't get their other attack against you, Gazi. Just the fact that that we'll was a possibility. It. I'm so tickled by that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Thank you for pointing that out. That's, yeah, that's awesome. So we're going to move on to Quonks. There are two pirates left still, and the one in front of you just looks super bloodied, super enraged at the death of their sister. What do you do? I'm I'm so sorry about this, uh, but I expect you'll be meeting your sister very soon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no regrets. No regrets. As Quonks pulls her azimuth laser pistol and points it up at the pirate. Oh, you're going to give them an AOO? Uh, sure. They can't really five foot step anywhere is the problem. That's true. You're backed up against a wall. Quonks, Quonks craft is feeling quite full of herself. Okay. Well, the AOO is an 18 against KAC. That hits. For nine slashing. Woo. Oh. Wow. They are not happy no. that you all killed her sister. That's okay. I'm going to full attack. <laughs> Woo. That's a, the first one is a 17 against EAC. Yeah, that nice. hits. The second one is also a 17 against EAC for... Okay. Well, the first one had one health, so they are dead. Dope. But <sighs> you may use your second attack against another target. Yay. Um, I don't want to. Because of what we discussed earlier, practically speaking, there's enough space in this vehicle for all currently alive creatures. So, I, Quagscraft would want to try to communicate that. I just killed your nap one of them. Two I sisters. Just killed two of your sisters. I mean, but you want to try to Lars, die. This ship is going down, whether we shoot you or not. If you would like to survive, drop your weapons and board this craft with us. All right. I can. Aid. This is going to be a very hard diplomacy roll, but go ahead and make it. Okay. This is comedic because there's no reason Quonk's craft should be rolling this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, yeah. Kazi would want. Come on, Natural 20. Right. The epitome of let the dice tell the story. Oh my god, it's a natural 20! <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's a 21! Are you kidding me? Let's go! <laughs> I'm not kidding. 
I'm, I, wow. How okay, can I move sweet. this camera to show a natural 20? It's, <laughs> I've never been so jazzed for a natural 20 in my life. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Let the dice go. <laughs> okay, yeah, like, okay. Now I have to think of diplomacy. stuff for this character. Their turn's not up yet, but you see wheels turning in their head. Okay. Nako, do you do anything? Oh, I see the game that they're playing, and I'm going to try to help. So I will pull my Doshko out of their sister as they drop to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I'm going to try to help. No, I will. It's coming. <laughs> Just like having some yeah. difficulty with it. Yeah. Like twisting right. it the whole time. Uh, <laughs> tough. <laughs> so they are going to stride right up to them with the blood still on the Doshko, and they're going to intimidate. Oh my god. It would be wise of you to drop everything, because if not, there's no way you walk away from this. All right. So I'm going to call this a, like, this is a post facto assist. Okay. So you only have to beat a 10, and you give a plus Fair two enough. to Quonks' diplomacy roll. That is a 12. Okay. So you're at a 23 now, Quonks. And we're going to move on to Gazi Gaz. Gazi attacks. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the timing is perfect. Uh, anyway, so Gazi was also already thinking of trying to get them to see the realization. So Gazi's like, hey, hey, look, 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 look. I know that's a lot of blood. And I know your other sister just died, but this could be the start of a new life for you. Come with us. And Gazi has a plus 10 to their uh, diplomacy. So, so you just auto succeed. I just auto assist. All right. Quonks, you're now at a 25. Gazi just rolled up and said, come with me if you want to live. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Dakoyo, you're the last person up before this pirate. Dakoyo moves up next to the remaining pirate and is just like holds out and like takes one of her hands and he's like listen and he like rubs it a little bit and he's like it's okay I've lost many of my loved ones too but if you come with us we'll promise we can do whatever we can to make it right and then he's gonna roll and uh with his plus seven that's a 23 oh my god <laughs> okay so you're at a 27 now what's your name Yes, <laughs> let's humanize you. My name's Lars. They they look around at their sisters lying dead on the floor, and this whole cargo bay, the whole ship, is just rumbling as it's rapidly approaching the atmosphere of the nearby planet. There isn't much time. They know this, and they say, Get the door open. I'm going to say one last farewell to my siblings. Chirp, chirp. <laughs> <laughs> Quarks hits the button. (laughs) Lars, as you pointed out, this ship is going with or without us. Any mementos you want to grab from your sisters, I am happy to help with, but we need to get into this mining vessel now. There's no time. I'm taking you out of combat, but (gasps) you have one action left. Oh, my. Okay. What do you want to do with it? Oh, well, man. I won't say you have one action left. You have one action left before something's going to happen. Ooh. Okay. Mm. You can do more than one action, but there will be consequences. Because I want I want to listen to Lars. Like, I want to see what mementos from her sisters she's looking for. Because I think it's fair that she should have something to remember her sisters by. So that's what you're doing? You're just going to assist Lars Watch, watch them as they go up to each of their sisters. For my first action, I'm going to look for what she's looking for and help her pull it off of their dead bodies. And then I want to help escort her to the mining vessel. Okay. But I want to I want to very explicitly do that first. Okay. So that's going to be, I'll tell you right now. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're going to do this one action at a time because it's easier for me. So your first action, you're going to help Lars retrieve something from one of their sisters. So it saves them an action. You can grab one from one sister and they can grab one from the other. Uh, so Lars instructs you to grab their data pad. Cool. Quonks craft grabs uh, the data pad of the sister that's next to her. 
Okay. And Lars runs over to the other sister, the one that has been pinned against this cargo container <laughs> by Nako. <laughs> they say their <laughs> goodbyes. It was nice knowing you, Velta. I don't know how we got into this situation, but maybe I can find a better life that doesn't involve me being a pirate and getting attacked by skittermanders. <laughs> I'm obviously way out of my league here. <laughs> maybe mom was right. I should have just been an accountant. <laughs> What is everyone else doing? <laughs> they always underestimate the fuzzy ones for some reason. Yeah, she's like a new low for sure. Uh, Dakoyo, Dakoyo is going to just loot the corpse like, uh, <laughs> of like the the sister down here for any like, <laughs> yeah, okay. less Fair. beautiful mementos or whatever. Uh, you're, a, you're able to pull their longsword and a tactical Ooh. semi-auto pistol. Dakoyo is like not really like socially cued in at the moment. Uh, being as unintelligent uh, as he is. And so he just like waves it around, like, look at how shiny it is. Ha ha! Like the sword, like. <laughs> it's kind of like shiny. Amazing. And that's it. Okay. The doors are open to the uh, zero G mining vessel. Gazi, Gaz, what are you doing? Okay. Gazi is not interested in looting and is instead going to walk up to behind Lars, pat Lars's back, and try and. Usher and escort Lars into the ship. Okay, I, I may I'm giving you guys like a lot of rushing feelings and everything, but you you can do one action before boarding the ship is what I'm saying. Just so uh, I'm clear. Sure. Yeah, I don't think that Gazi is interested in anything from them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you. So you you comfort Lars and they you they're making peace with the situation. Yeah. I think you know it's just business. It's not personal. Yeah. Okay. Nako, what do you do? Nako takes a few steps and looks back towards the ship, kind of imagining the ship as a whole and what it's going through and their first captaincy. And they look down and they pull their little captain's badge off and they drop it on the ground as they turn and Mm. head towards the escape vessel we're using. They also think about the fact that they left their Nako Nexican action figure in their cabin and they'll never get that back. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so I imagine that you've called it an action figure for the past year, but it's actually like a two foot stuffed animal that you sleep with <laughs> cuddled up next to. <laughs> you will never know. We'll never know. It's going up in flames. <laughs> Oh, man, I should have put, like, the called uh, weapon fusion on it, so I could have been like, to me! (laughs) 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 Akio (laughs) Nakonechkin. Okay, one thing to note, while you can board this ship, there is one thing that needs to be done before you do so. (gasps) The door is closed. No, no, we pressed the button. Remember? Beep, beep. (laughs) The door to the the cargo bay is closed. (gasps) Ah, <gasps> uh, okay. Oh. Then, Fuckin since it. I didn't do a whole lot, I can go do that. Okay. I put a hand on Gazi Gaz. Don't worry, I'll take care of this. Okay. All right, and I will head over there. Okay, you run over to the cargo bay doors. Now, you are currently in free fall. Uh-huh. As soon as those doors open, <gasps> everything in this cargo bay is going to be jettisoned. Uh-huh. So what do you want to do? Oh... Uh, we don't have much time, do we? Uh, let's see. Lars, can you open the door? <laughs> <laughs> J- joking. Altitude at <laughs> oh god three thousand feet. Uh, is there anything to grab onto near that door? There are emergency handholds next to it, but if you're holding onto that, you're not in the ship. You're not in the mining rig. Can we like swing by? And- yes. Okay, no, I'm I'm pretty sure I know how I'm going to action hero this. So you could you could try to rig the doors to open on a time delay with an engineering check. Mm. Ugh. Yeah, I had considered it, but I don't know if Nako would have considered it. Fair enough. And in keeping with playing my character, I don't think I would have. All right. So Nako is just going to run towards the door to get ready and say. Everyone get inside the ship. Would Gazi be driving? Like, is it possible to? Uh, I, I don't want to metagame this. It's not really going to be a driving situation. Yeah. This is a land vehicle. Yeah. You're relying on the emergency anti-grav system to kick in to prevent a catastrophic crash. 
It's like okay. an airbag deploying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna hit the button and go from there. It's all right. Hey, uh, hey, Nako, I think there might be a delay if you want me to swing by and, and, and see if I can get that set for you. I'll take a look at it, but everyone get on the ship because I have some engineering. It's cool. All right. Okay. What do you all do? Get on that ship. Okay. Nako, give me an engineering check. You got it. That is a 13. Okay. Ooh. Everyone else is getting aboard the ship. Yeah, Kwongs is probably, she's she's edging toward the ship, but she's keeping an eye on Nako to figure out what, whether she's actually doing what they talked about or she's trying to showboat. Okay, is Dakoyo getting on the ship? Yes. And Gazigaz, who gets on first? Uh, Dakoyo moved on map, so I think he'll get on first. Okay. Once Dakoyo gets aboard the ship, Nako, you finish attempting to timer rig the cargo bay doors. But instead, they open mm-hmm. immediately. Oh, oh come on. No. Oh, As boy. this torrent of air begins to evacuate from the ship. Oh, my. Everyone who isn't Dakoyo, <sighs> I'm going to need you to take some damage. No. For some reason, I expected that sentence to end with make a save. Me too. Me too. Uh, listen, we're not done yet. That's what I was hoping to. I was checking real quick, but it's actually <laughs> no save. Oh, cool. Oh, my God. Cool, 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 cool. Great. You're all going to take seven bludgeoning damage, except for Dakoyo. And that includes wow. Lars, who was still saying goodbye. Oh, boy. Yikes. As the, the air begins to evacuate from the cargo bay and cargo containers just start tossing about the cargo bay and some of them hit you in the head as they fly by. Dakoyo, the doors to the ship are open and you can feel the air pulling on this mining rig, starting to pull it out of the cargo bay. There isn't much time to get aboard. Anyone who is not aboard currently can make a check, an acrobatics or athletics check to rush to the mining rig and get aboard before it flies out of the cargo bay. Oh my. Uh, okay. Uh, so everyone give me ath- acrobatics or athletics. That's a six athletics from Quonkscraft. Oh no. It's an 18 for Gazi Gaze, no fear. Okay, Nako, I guess I gotta make a roll with Lars too. Huh? Yeah, I want to see what's happening to Quonks because I want to be able to react. If they're gonna get like sucked out of here, I want to try to grab them. But okay, then I need an athletics roll from you to hang on since you're right by the cargo bay. You got it. But I'll make it a little easier for you. Yeah, I'm gonna wait for a reaction too. You better, because that's an eleven. <laughs> My rolls have been absolutely the worst today. Okay, Nako, you managed to hang on as you wait for everyone to get aboard. Gazi Gaz, you make it aboard. Quonks, you're rushing to this mining rig, but a couple of boxes smash into you and you're going to take another set of damage. Oh, man. You take eight bludgeoning damage. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Okay. For everyone's information, Quonkscraft now has 10 hit points and zero stamina points. Oh, man. Lars what the makes fuck? their way. As soon as the doors open, they start rushing to the mining rig. But a cargo bay container hits them in the back of the head oh. and they fall unconscious. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> Damn it. No. I made a roll for them and they failed. Oh my God. But they are on the ship just unconscious. Is that correct? They're not on the ship. Oh, they're unconscious no. on the ground and they're currently sliding towards the exit. Oh. Okay. So the vehicle is still making its way out of the cargo container. So you get another chance to make a roll to get aboard. Quonks, give me another acrobatics or athletics. Nako as well, depending on what you're doing, you can either hold on and wait for people or you can make your way to the vehicle. Lars cannot make rolls. They automatically fail. Okay. Then I'm seeing them just get smashed over the head by this box. This is essentially what I was waiting for, but I was expecting Quonks. So as this happens, I'm going to dash towards this unconscious person and try to grab them so I can pull them to the ship. Sorry, uh, Nako, you also took eight from... Oh, no, I got it. Because you're staying out. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I got it. (laughs) Okay. 
I expected Quant's craft to suck, but I guess I'll rescue Lars <laughs> on the way in. Um, that's a 22 from Quonks. Okay, cool. Quonks, you succeed. Are you rescuing nice. Lars as part of this? Uh, Don't do it, Quonks. If a 22 will allow me to rescue Lars, then absolutely. It will allow you to rescue Lars, but at the cost of having to make another roll next time. You'll you'll be carrying Lars the rest of the way. Um, that feels foolish. So I'm gonna. You, I won't. I'll, I'll. You'll take half damage this time. I'm gonna get on the ship and I'm gonna let Nako worry about it. All right. Good choice. I do exactly that thing that he decided not. Yeah, to Yeah, I do. want to rephrase that. I think Nako is better equipped to handle the situation. <laughs> and I am prepared to do so. Fair enough. Once you make it aboard the vehicle, Nako. What are you doing? I'm seeing this unconscious person who has surrendered and I'm going to dash at them and grab them to try to save them. Okay. Give me a acrobatics or athletics. That is a 16. 16. Okay. You successfully make your way over to Lars and pick up their unconscious body. Doesn't seem like they're dead, but it's going to take a trained medical professional to bring them back up. Okay. You're going to take 10 bludgeoning damage. Oh, hurts. Okay. Is there any chance that I am able to leave the ship to help out Mako and Lars? If you leave the ship, you're going to be making rolls too. Is that what you want to do? Don't, Don't do it. it. Don't do it. Zero out of 10 would not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> I just see Gazi Gaz like peeking out. It's like, no. I'll tell you what I'm rolling. I'm rolling 2d6. Uh for the damage, I'm not worried about. It is the, uh, it is them failing. And if, if I can be like, I don't want Nako to fail, and then we don't have any opportunity to save Nako and Lars. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. So I don't know how that works out in your GM strategy. It, it, if you want, if you head out there to help, basically you're going to have to make the same role that you were making, but at a higher DC. Okay. <laughs> All right. And if 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 Nako goes unconscious, then will we... Is that just it? Who knows? Okay, all right. Uh, then, you know what? Uh, Gus is gonna gonna step out and try and hold on. Okay, so you're stepping out to assist Nako carrying this unconscious pirate who surrendered to you. Yeah, make my okay. roll. That's actually pretty cool. I just imagined them being like, no fear, and then like step out into the no hurling. Oh, my yeah. God, that's so cool. Okay, so you were aboard... This round, you ran back out. You don't take damage for this round, but okay. you're going to make a roll for this next round. So Gazi Gaz and Nako, give me rolls. 18. 19. Gazi, you rush out to grab <laughs> Lars around the other arm, and the two of you drag Lars back onto the ship. <sighs> the doors psh, close behind you. And shortly thereafter, just as you're getting seated in the vehicle, you get Lars strapped in. No sooner than that happens that the ship is thrust out of the cargo bay and you begin a free fall descent. Oh, my. In the, the mining vehicle. Oh, man. Nako. Wow. Looking out from the sole viewport as you fall, you can see what was once your ship is now a twisted amalgamation of two distinct vessels as if they collided at a perpendicular angle and became permanently wedged together. Fins jut out improbably from bulkheads and the nose of the space pirate ship protrudes from where your sleeping quarters should be. Suddenly, a bolt of purple lightning from out of nowhere strikes the fused vessels and they disappear. Wait, what? Uh, uh. Moments later, your makeshift escape pod plunges into the cloud cover of the nearby planet. Everyone, give me a fortitude save. Oh, your ship is tumbling down. You can feel this heat reverberating from the walls of the vehicle, and you hear a computerized voice. Emergency, activating anti-gravity protection protocols. And it slows your ship down just enough to avoid a fatal impact on the planet's surface. It's four for me. 
unfortunately. 11 for Quunk's craft. That's a fail. I appreciate that. Guys, we got a nine. Listen, our crew lives and dies together. That's a 12. <laughs> That's a success. <laughs> oh, no. After that thing I just said. <laughs> if you saved, you take no damage. A poetic survivor's guilt. If you failed, you take six bludgeoning from the impact. Oh, man. You find yourself inside of your vehicle, everything within thrown into disarray. You unbuckle your safety belts. What do you do? Is there a, I mean, metagaming, medicine, Quonks has a plus nine. Do you have a med kit? Uh, I think I have a med kit. Let me check my inventory. Uh, yes, I do have a med kit. Nice. Okay. Uh, Don't I have some ability to like do it for free if we take 10 minutes? I can't remember you exactly also have what it was like called. The automatic stabilize. I don't know if they're dying. Yeah, I yeah. Think it's more of an assessment. Like Lars, like yeah. looking over what she, what injuries she might have from. Yeah, they are currently the equivalent of dying. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, great. Okay, so they need to be stabilized. Solid. Let's uh, let's try to stabilize her. Okay. That is a twenty-four. You successfully stabilize Lars. They are in no condition to help with anything. Yeah. Both of their legs are badly broken. They have a severe concussion. Cool. But they're alive. What is it? Treat major injuries that you can do with a medicine check and a med kit? Treat deadly wounds. Treat deadly wounds. Yeah, that. They are going to require long-term care to heal the broken legs. Gotcha. But you could restore some hit points to them with treat deadly wounds. Hmm. All right, let's try that. Okay. I think the DC is 25 for a basic med kit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let's see what happens. Lars, you might be screwed. We'll see how this goes. Lars, you might be screwed. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh, good. I was worried it was a natural one, but it, no, it's a seven. Although it's roughly the same consequence. 16. Yeah, their wounds are beyond your ability to heal. Oh. Hey, uh, Dakoyo Skitter Saver, uh, these wounds are beyond my ability to heal. Do you have any magic you might be able to pitch her away? Well, I am a Skitter Saver, not a Pirate Saver, but I'll give it a shot. That kind of walks over. To be honest, I don't know, would a Mystic Cure help with this? Uh, yeah, it'll restore hit points. So that'll, then she'll be able to function, help us out potentially not trying to get ahead of ourselves it won't heal the broken bones we can right drag her around got it well he's gonna do that so that's a 1d yeah it, it would revive them though they would no longer be unconscious that's eight points okay they recover eight hit points and they <gasps> oh, welcome back i'm alive don't look down just look at my eyes okay all right why You've experienced a bad fall. We'll cover it <laughs> eventually, but all you need to know is you're going to live. I don't know how enjoyable your life will be from here on out, but we're with you. I don't know about that. That's a little... I can't feel my legs. Yeah, about that. Uh... Uh, yeah. This is That's a fresh the start. shock. You're going to feel yeah. them in a few seconds. Maybe not the start you were thinking, but we'll get there. Yeah, it's probably better that you can't feel your legs right now, if I'm honest. That is true. Uh, well, I mean, thanks. <laughs> we did save you from dying, just letting you know. You also killed my sisters. Yeah, well. To be fair, we also knew there were only five seats in the vehicle. Your sisters were going to die anyway. No. Well, I don't know. Okay. Uh, maybe Quark's the coil. Maybe take a look outside. Stop talking about the dead sisters, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it's not yeah. good. The it's dead, not good. The de so don't, don't talk about them. No. I'm just going yeah, to uh, grab them and drag them out of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea, I think. Executive action. Ow, 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 the entire way out. You, you drag Quonks out of the ship, open up the rear door, and you find yourself in a swampy environment with irregular hillocks poking from murky water mm. and tall, skinny, coniferous trees in every direction. The sky is the color of an angry bruise, occasionally lit by the same flashes of purple lightning you saw while your mining vehicle was plummeting to the ground. The air on this planet is obviously breathable, if a bit humid, and despite the heavy cloud cover, it's apparent that it's day. Everyone who's outside, 
Give me a perception roll. 22. 10. Nako, did you drag anyone else out? No, no one else said they were coming outside because you guys were talking to Lars. I feel like I, Dakoyo is still, help, still with Lars. Quonks, you notice that there are some cargo boxes that have crashed near your position. Hey, uh, there are some cargo boxes that have crashed near our position. We should probably go investigate to see what supplies we might have available to us. Dakoyo, would you mind joining me? He just, like, taps, like, her hand with his furry paw. We'll be back. Let's see if we can find some leg braces, he says while, like, walking out. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's great. Quonks, like, limps over to them. You rummage through the crashed containers, and uh, most of the things are destroyed. But what you are able to salvage is an emergency supply kit, which contains an industrial backpack, two spacesuits, and eight ready-to-eat meals, which is uh, less than two days of food for the five of you. Mm. Uh, you also find a dispenser of bonding epoxy. Um, cool. Uh, is Dakoyo able to, in this swampy area, get some some sticks, some vines to try to, you know, put her legs back into some kind of reasonable shape? Get some splints. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can definitely do that as part of your well you know you don't get another you can only do one treat deadly wounds roll per day sure but uh i I would say that yes you can definitely salvage some sticks and and set the bone to be fair quonks rolled the treat deadly wounds yeah i think it's not per person Uh, it's per it's per target uh, interesting i I guess i guess okay cool cool Dakoyo excitedly, like, you know, runs back in there with them and arranges her legs and let's just say they're not in good, in a good position. So she, he, she he kind of puts them in straight and hopefully they'll fuse together better. <laughs> Don't move them, keep them as they are. Oh, wait, actually, you really can't move you, them, can you? You won't feel a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing at all. <laughs> they're there, they're there. Okay. All right. So you, you are crashed on this planet. What do you do? Uh, I feel like the first order of business is to set up shelter. Yeah. Your mining vehicle is probably the best shelter that you're going to get yeah. around here. You know, it's it's the interior is still mostly intact, even though the vehicle itself isn't capable of driving anywhere now. Ooh, that's actually a good question. What would it take to get this vehicle driving ready? About a week and a lot of UPBs. Cool. I don't think we have either we enough food. Yeah. yeah, we don't have enough. Well, let's take a moment real quick here, like a short rest or something like that, so we don't die immediately. And then why don't uh, some of us start scouting the area? If we're stuck on this planet, we might as well at least know if there's civilization or something. I feel like we should take a long rest later, too. Uh, but for now, yes, gathering some. Some supplies would be good. Yeah. Whenever you're traveling, you want to adjust to the time change. So it's daytime, so we should explore. Mm-hmm. So are we doing our short rest first? That's my plan. Uh, that's Kazu's plan, too. All right. You guys know how to do that in Foundry? Yeah. Cool. Oh, how convenient. There's a short rest button. Yeah, yep, yep. that's good. Quas, do you need a uh, serum for your HP? I, uh, I brought some. I'm sure I'll be fine. Okay. I have a bunch, so just let me know. I appreciate the offer. Thank you. Well, maybe someone should stay here and watch over the human person in there. But we need to go look around, so. That's probably my job. Whoever's coming, follow me. Good luck, everyone. All right. um, Why don't you give me either a computers, engineering, or mysticism? None of those sound like survival, which is what I was expecting. Yeah. 15 computers. 15 computers. Ooh. You said engineering was one of those? That's a 16 engineering. That is a 23 okay. engineering. Engineering, okay. That's it. Is Dakoyo making a roll? Dakoyo's not out there. You can still make a roll. Okay. Engineering. You said computers or engineering. Right? Or mysticism. Or mysticism, okay. I'll definitely do that then. Uh, 30. Wow. So Nako and Dakoyo, you're able to pick something up in this area. Nako, 
You're sensing a strange interference on your instruments. It seems to be stronger when you walk to the northwest. It's clearly not naturally occurring, and it could indicate civilization or other debris from the wreckage. Hmm. Dakoyo, you're sensing a disturbance of planar energy coming from the east. It's possible some kind of planar storm on this planet is what caused your ship to crash here, or it could be some magical form of travel that you're sensing that is used by whatever inhabitants there are on this planet, if any. You said the first thing you said was something about a ship having crashed here. Is that correct? It's possible that the planar energy you are sensing is part of some kind of planar storm on this oh, planet, storm. which is Apology. which may have been what caused your ship to crash. Makes sense. Mm. So the fur stands up on Dakoyo's body and he's like, I sense a disturbance in the planar energy. Some kind of storm, perhaps, the, the one that brought down our ship might be causing it, or the natives might have some way of manipulating it to travel. It's in the east. We might want to investigate carefully. And what direction was the one that... I Nako got? is sensing interference coming from the northwest. And... It seems, uh, and they smack their equipment a little bit. Seems there's some interference going on around here. I'm wondering if that means there's like another ship nearby causing it or something of that nature, maybe even a settlement. But the radio waves are kind of weird here and mainly in the like northeast direction. Northwest. May no, no, I'm deciding it's northeast. Oh, in the northwest are you sure? direction. Oh, I'm a thousand percent sure. It is definitely northeast. I oh. couldn't get okay. this wrong. All right. <laughs> With all kinds no, of things going on around us. I, I feel like Quonkscraft has a natural skepticism for most of Nako's approaches. Um, <laughs> oh, it's very mutual. So <laughs> oh. after you hear this information from Nako, you can tell from your comm units. God. that there is definitely some interference going on. So you are able to verify this claim. I think we should uh, head east into this mystical anomaly to do further investigation. Maybe we'll be able to get off of this rock. Shouldn't we find if there's civilization here before we go running and chasing storms? Possibly. Um, clarifying question, were there any signs of invest of civilization as we were crashing to the surface? It was too chaotic as you're falling to make out any civilization. The storms were brewing heavily and the, your ship, your vehicle was tumbling end over end. Something tells me that this planet might be a bit too chaotic to support civilization as we know it. Our best bet would be to get off of this rock and continue our salvage operations. I mean, we don't have a ship anymore. What are we going to jump into it and hope it flings us into space? I'll say, <laughs> like I said, the energy that I sensed, it, it could be a means of, of travel. We might be able to use it to improve our circumstances. But I don't know if, if that is such a thing, if we'll be able to come back for that pirate. Ugh. I'm beginning to wonder why Quonks wanted to bring her along. I'm not going to lie. Hey, Quonks, what was your thinking? I mean, if if there was space for five life forms, we should have rescued five life forms. That was a good thing to do, Quonks. I I don't agree. They did surrender. <laughs> I mean, Quonks, it's extremely dangerous. By all Quonks, I, you know, that is a very good point, and I would like to reward such. You taking a moral stance? Here. Benevolent beha <laughs> behavior. So I'm going to give you a popsicle. Hey, <laughs> there you go. That's what it's all about. So I wasn't expecting that. Dope. I, I, it's, I'm happy for that. We got a popsicle out of saving her, so that's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know how far away this giant storm is, but if it's within scouting distance, maybe we can go take a look and, you know, come back if we find something, some place that's safe so we can drag this person. Can you tell us about the topography nearby? Like, are there any hills or mountains we might be able to climb to get a better vantage point? Or trees, even? It's... it's Okay. I heard swamp. It's a swamp. Yeah. There are... The, the book says they are hillocks. H-I-L-L-O-C-K. Oh. I had never heard this word before. Yeah. It is a small hill. Oh. So, like, uh, it's not yeah. completely gotcha. flat, 
but you're not gonna get a major viewpoint by yeah. I mean, it's climbing it's on kind one of, of these the stuff you'd find in the Shire. Well, like, this is, I'm, yeah. I'm from Florida. I'm yeah. surrounded by swamp. But even in the swamps, we have like, I forget the species of tree, but they're like, they grow with like tendrils out of the water and grow up to like 40 yeah, or 50 there, feet there high. Are, there are some trees. I don't mm. know if I'd say they're 40 or 50 feet high, but there are some huh. trees. Vinny, what kind of monsters should we look out for? I mean, some advanced crocodiles, uh, snakes, possibly now. Crocodiles, uh, venomous frogs. Excuse me, poisonous frogs. Giant crawfish. Crawdads. Oh, catfish okay. will take your finger off. Uh, you know, whatever. Oh, just, just keep okay. your fingers out of the Fantastic. water. Fantastic. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> we'll just stumble across Disneyland. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll find some fine. cool shit out here. Yeah, look out for mice that take all your credits. <laughs> there are two points of interest that you have detected which one do you want to go to first uh does dakoya know if it's within scouting distance like nako suggested they're both within walking distance okay why don't we head uh towards the energy then investigate all what right do you think that's fair let's, it's better than standing here yeah. let's get some stuff done so you're going to the east towards the planar energy yes mm -hmm. okay so you make your way through the swamps to the east towards this planar energy that Dakoyo sensed. As you make your way there, you see a few small stands of trees rising above the swamp's waterline. And in the center of this new map that I'm going to bring you to. Oh, new map, you say? A new map. I'll always take one of those, thank you. Uh, yeah. Like those, yeah. Pl yes, please. Whoa. Yo! It's like a giant... What's that? It looks like a pepper. <laughs> yeah. What is it? A really hot pepper. I'm sorry. An unusual ribbon of reddish light hangs in the air, from which tiny bolts of fiery energy shoot out intermittently. A particularly large crackle of energy bursts out from the ribbon, striking a nearby tree, and it erupts in a blaze of flames and sends sparks flying in all directions. A second bolt shoots out, but this time, it goes straight Come on. for... Oh, no. Oh, no, no, Don't no. you... Quonks. Jesus! No! no. And we'll see you next time. Oh, my uh, goodness. Oh, God you, Pepper! <laughs> Did I dive in the way? <gasps> when life drains you down, charge up on... The Emergency Power Network. Theme song triangles by Diamond Ace. Find them at bandcamp.com. Music provided by Nicholas Judy of Dark Fantasy Studio at darkfantasystudio.com and Tabletop Audio. Find them at tabletopaudio.com as well as Carl Casey of White Bat Audio. Find them at whitebataudio.com. Font Azonics by Mixo. Find them on Twitter at MixoFX. The Starfinder role-playing game, including its official lore and images, are the intellectual property of Paizo Incorporated, all rights reserved. Narrated by Danny Lee Collins.